Caroline, I understand that you have a whole nother product in addition to Starship that's called Ship Gear for Sage 100 ERP customers. And Ship Gear might be the more affordable option of the two. Can you tell us the differences between Ship Gear and Starship and how it applies to the Sage 100 ERP community? The Ship Gear product is what we consider more of our entry level product. It uh, basically is an interface between the carrier supplied systems like UPS WorldShip or FedEx Ship Manager. And it allows customers to install a plug and play interface to the Sage 100 ERP application so that they can quickly get up and running and have an automated integrated application with the UPS WorldShip application that they're already familiar with. Typically, our customers are going to be utilizing ship gear if they already use UPS World Ship and they do a large percentage of their shipments through either UPS or FedEx, one of the carriers. Um, when a customer requires uh, more automation with regards to various carriers, multi-carrier, maybe they're um, utilizing third-party parcel insurance, some of those more sophisticated features, that's when a customer would be looking at the Starship application. And sometimes our customers do start with ship gear and then migrate up to the Starship application. But what I wanted to show you today is the interface that we have between uh, WorldShip and Sage 100 ERP, formerly known as Mass90. So what you're looking at right now is the WorldShip application. This is the shipping application that customers can get free of charge through UPS. Um, and what you'll see here is this import key. This is where we're going to be um, either scanning in the order or invoice number that you want to ship against, or you can also hit the question mark here to browse orders. And so I'm just going to grab um, the invoice 176 here and bring it up on screen. And what happened there is Shipyard just went out into the mass database, grabbed all the information, and brought it into WorldShip. So it's bringing in all the ship to information, it's translating the ship via, bringing in reference numbers such as the um, order number and the invoice number. And from here, a customer would typically weigh the package. The other um, things that Shipyear can do is automate options such as Quantum View Notify. So here we can um, automatically set up email addresses for who will get notified of any shipment notifications as well as any exception notifications. So on this particular case, we have the email address associated to the order, the salesperson at ABC who's getting both the ship and the exception notification so that they can be proactive if there's an issue with the shipment. And then we set up just a flat uh, mapping that allows you to um, put in ABC at ABC company is going to receive a ship notification. So that email address will automatically be notified. So all of this. Uh, is going to allow the shipper to just basically uh, enter in that invoice number and then reduce the amount of steps or clicks that it takes to get this information in so that they can provide uh, the best customer service that they can. Here we have the declared value coming over as the order total. You can modify the mapping here to not bring this in if you didn't want to. That's the other thing with Shipgear is that we do have the ability to customize or personalize the interface. So you can change the field maps and translations that come default with the interface. I'm just going to add one package here. So we have a couple packages, put in a weight, and I'll go ahead and process the shipment. Once I process the shipment, this is the test label that's coming up. WorldShip's going to print the label just as it normally does. And then Shipgear is going to write that information back into math. So if I go into the invoice that we just shipped against, should be able to see that. So here it is, um, 100076. I click on this tracking button here. Here are the two packages that we just shipped. So it's showing you the tracking numbers and then UPS Next Day Air. And then on the totals tab, we have the freight amount coming back. Now, you asked me earlier about differences between Starship and Shipgear. One of the primary differences is that Starship can retrieve the order and then create the invoice as a result of the shipment. With Shipgear, it's a little bit different. Because we're retrieving header level information only, 
uh, we allow you to ship against both the order and the invoice, as well as the customer list if you wanted to ship out something like samples. But if you ship against an order, it's going to write back to the order. And then if you ship against an invoice, it's going to write back to the invoice. So it won't be creating the invoice as we ship. One slight difference between the two applications.